All right, guys, so today we're going to go over focal point knots. The most popular, we're going to start with the overhand, go to the eight, move to the clove, then we're going to do the single twist and the magic X, talk about the pros and cons of all these type of knots. Um, standard sling to use, 120 sling Dyneema, um, very nice to use, very easy to make knots with. And also, for some of this tutorial, I'm going to be using a carabiner to make the knots. Um, some people don't, many people don't. The reason I do is when I make knots and I have gloves on, I like to have this to hold instead of trying to pull these two very small strands through. So we're going to do it with the carabiner. I do it with, uh, without gloves and with gloves with the carabiner, a good habit to get into. So we're going to start with the overhand knot. Now to tie this, I'm just going to take a bite up here, I'm going to bring this around the back. And now we have this loop we can go through here, take it right through like so. And now I can just pull to fall line. So I'm just pulling down to fall line, making sure it's nice and tight. So that's very simple overhand. Now the pros and the cons of the overhand. So basically the pros, it's easiest to make and remember. And you can see here, there's basically one step going around the back, going through the loop. Um, also, it's easy to inspect. So if you want to make sure if it's right, it's very easy to check out and make sure all the strands are in the right orientation. It's also redundant. So meaning if one of these were to snap, let's say, and this were to go, then you still have one strand here. Um, you have a one point anchor instead of a zero point anchor. Um, so you want redundancy, making sure you have two options. Um, the next point, it has a nice shelf. So we can use a shelf here. We could put a carabiner in the shelf. We also can put a second carabiner in this focal point area here, which is very nice as well. Um, the cons of this, which is basically one and a huge point, when you're doing ice climbing tours or you're having people um, on your focal point often and on the rope, this gets very, very tight, very hard to untie. So it's something to consider that you may want to um, not do it because it's so hard to untie. So for the figure eight, I'm going to take a bite as well, a little bit bigger bite than I did before. I'm going to bring it around like I did. Now remember the overhand, I just go through here, but instead I'm bringing it around one more time and then going through that same loop. So that's basically the difference. Now with this, say I'm pulling it towards the direction of fall line, which is right there. Um, and so this is it. It's just one more twist instead of the overhand, you twist it again, come through that loop. All right, so now let's talk about some pros and cons of the eight. Number one, one of the best things, it's easy to untie, and that's the main reason people use it. Even though you have many clients waiting this focal point during a climbing tour, whatever the case may be, it's much easier to untie than an overhand. Um, number two, it has a nice shelf like we talked about with the overhand. You can also fit a second carabiner here in this focal point area, which is, which is very useful. Um, we have redundancy as well. So if one of these strands were to go, you still have a second strand as a backup, which is very important for anchors. Um, some cons of this, some things which aren't too great. Number one is this eight takes up a little more slack, takes up a little more of the sling than the overhand does. So if you uh, don't have a lot of space, you may just do an overhand. Number two, it's for students, it's harder to remember. Sometimes they do an extra twist. And then for instructors and for people looking to inspect, um, if you don't have a thin sling, you have a very thick sling, it could be harder to inspect because of a big gaggle of, of sling that's basically wrapped around itself. So those are the cons, but the biggest pro is basically just being able to untie it um, easily compared to the overhand, which is usually pretty hard to untie. All right, now for the clove hitch, um, those of you who don't know how to tie a clove hitch, please watch my video and then also get some instruction by a certified guide. So I'm just going to do basically strands that are opposing. As you see here, this strand comes from the back, this strand comes from the front, and then you put them behind each other. As I said, we'll see this on a video in more detail. You have this nice little loop in the center, carabiner through, and you want to make sure also you tighten it, right? So just kind of give it a left and right as I said, towards the direction of fall line, which in this case is straight down. So this is how to tie a clove. Um, now the clove is what I personally use the most often. Some benefits of the clove, it's very easy to adjust. Um, and this is pre-climb or post-climb, not during the climb, of course. It's not gonna self-equalize. But if I do wanna adjust it, I just pull one of the strands and now I can just take some slack out. And now we have the fall line going over to the right side. And if I wanna do the same thing on the left, I have the fall line now adjusted to the left. Let's go adjust it back to center. All 
like so. So that's very simple to adjust, one of the biggest benefits, in my opinion, of using this. Um, the second good thing about this, it's very easy to untie. So if I want to untie it, I literally just slide it through and then slide it right off the carabiner. That's very nice. Now the cons of this. So number one, you can't fit a second carabiner into this focal point area, not possible. Um, number two, although there is a shelf here, the shelf is very close. If you put a carabiner here, it becomes very close to anything that's happening in this focal point carabiner. Um, for me, I prefer a nice amount of separation from my shelf, and this puts the carabiner very, very close. Um, so if I'm using a shelf and I need a shelf, I typically would use an overhand, most likely, or an eight if I desire. But yeah, so those are the cons of this system. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is going to be the standard twist, which is uh, fairly popular. So we have just one twist and we're putting the carabiner through. Now the benefit of this system is that you have travel. So as the person moved to the right or moved to the left, it's self equalizing, which is very nice. So the anchors are sharing the weight, distributing it evenly. Now the problem with this is if one of these anchors goes, let's say for example, then this is gonna have a huge shock load. This whole strand will be shock loading which is not ideal. And also, if one of these strands tears, let's say, for example, then you lose the anchor. Um, this carabiner will be coming out of, out of where it's supposed to stay in, and then the climber, whatever the case, will fall down. So it's not redundant in that sense. And that's one of the biggest consequences of using something like this, is you lack redundancy. Um, but as we talked about, let's just go over the pros and cons. So equalize during a climb. It's very easy to remember, very easy to inspect, obviously, as you can see right here. It's not redundant, and there's a huge shock load potential. So in my book, this is definitely a no-go. But just so you can see and understand the pros and cons of using this type of system. We're going to go to the next system now. So next, we're going to talk about the Magic or Sliding X. So this is a very popular one as well. Um, to make this simply, I'm just going to take one of the strands, twist it, put it through both strands. Okay, now as you can see, as I use this system here, what I can do is I can self-equalize. So as the anchor is moving, as the climber is moving, it's still remaining equalized, sharing load on both strands, on both anchor points, which is very nice. Also, we have two stopper knots here, and these stopper knots are here to avoid the potential of a very big shock load with just a single twist. So if one of the anchors were to go, the carabiner would travel up to the stopper knot instead of traveling all the way up to where the strand was attaching to the anchor, which as I said, is a very, very big chance for shock load. Uh, another good thing about this anchor is it's redundant. So for example, if one of the strands tears up here or tears near the anchor, then what would happen is you would just then catch the overhand. Um, it wouldn't slide off as it would uh, with the single twist. So that's another great point about this situation here. Now, in conclusion, to talk about all of them in my recommendations, I recommend as a student or somebody beginning, you start with the overhand. That's the most simple to do, the most simple to recognize, and also people you're climbing with can easily see if it's done properly. Um, and then if you want to, you can move on to the eight, which is a little easier to untie, but takes up more slack in the sling. Eventually, you can move to the clove if you understand the clove very well if you wanna be able to adjust pre or post climb very quickly, and also um, you could undo it very easily as well. But I would stay away from the sliding X, um, just because it's these two overhands can get very, very hard to untie, and also the twist, because the twist is not redundant. If one of the strands goes, then your whole system goes. So that's the video, I hope you enjoyed, take care.